In this video, we're going to talk about Daniel's 70 weeks. We find that mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, beginning with verse 24, where it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. <clears throat> verse 25 says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Verse 26, And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, <clears throat> but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of war of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now that's just the reading of that passage of scripture. And what I'd like for us to do is just look at a few simple things here that will give an idea as to my position and how these things go and how these 70 weeks work. <clears throat> I'd like for you to, to go back as we go to the next slide here. I would like to go back to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2 where it says, In the first year of his reign, uh, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Now that becomes important because the 70 years that Daniel is talking about here is connected in the same chapter as the 70 weeks. And in a few moments, I hope that becomes important to you. So I'd like to go over to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, and read verses 11 and 12 so that we can get an idea about what Jeremiah said. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nation, nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Verse 12 says, And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it a perpetual desolation. So, here we have the prophecy of the 70 years that Israel was to be in, the, in captivity. And they were in capti captivity for 70 years. This becomes important in our text in uh, Daniel chapter 9, because in verse 2, we, we see a reference to the 70 years. Now, the reason I brought this up is because the, the mindset of the Jewish people was that these 70 years <clears throat> were to be continual 70 years, that there would not be any breaks within that period of 70 years when they were in captivity. In other words, they wouldn't go captive and then go back and then go captive again and go back and so forth. But it would be 70 years continuous years. Now, as we go to the next slide, let's notice as we continue the thought of the comparison, we're comparing Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 with uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. And it says there, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Now with our attitude, or with their attitude, about the 70 years in Daniel 9-2, and in Jeremiah 25-11 and 12, uh, being continuous, then don't you think that their mind would still be set to believe that this 70 weeks would be a continual 70 weeks rather than as is taught many times and I suppose is the major belief and, and 
um, uh, idea about it today is that the 70 weeks are broken up. <clears throat> I believe they are continuous, and I believe that's the, the uh, mindset of the Jewish people. Another thing we need to notice is, as we go to the next slide, we notice the theme of Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 down through 27. Notice that the theme in these verses is the Messiah, or Jesus Christ. So that's important. So we'll notice this. If you have your Bible open there, look in verse 24, and you'll see uh, the phrase, to anoint the most holy. That's Jesus Christ, to anoint the most holy. In verse 25, we find the phrase, Messiah the Prince. In verse 26, we see the word Messiah. In, the, in verse 27, we see the pronoun he. Now, with Jesus Christ being the major subject of this whole passage, wouldn't it be uh, logical that the, the uh, antecedent to the pronoun he would be Messiah? And, of course, I think it is. Uh, I believe the word he in verse 27 refers back to the Messiah. And so that takes that makes a lot of difference in the way that you interpret or you understand these verses. I wish I had more time to talk about that, but we don't. And, and maybe in another video we'll do that. Now as we go to the next slide, notice we have confirmed the covenant. Now I want you to notice that it is not a covenant, but it is the covenant. Not a covenant, but the covenant. The, the covenant is... Uh, confirmed. Um, and so I believe that this is the covenant of grace that God made with Jesus Christ and his people. Ezekiel 36 26 says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And then in Romans 11:27. It says, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And so there's the covenant. It is a spiritual covenant, uh, a covenant of grace that God has made between himself uh, as a father, his son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and of course, his people. As we go to the next slide, we'll find a, a, a couple of more uh, verses of Scripture. Now we have also, as the name of this slide confirmed the covenant, Exodus 24, 8, And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. So there we have the covenant, not a covenant, the covenant. In Acts chapter 3, verse 25, Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Now this covenant with Abraham is the covenant, the covenant of grace and salvation and redemption that uh, God made with his Son and the Holy Spirit and with his people. As we go to the next slide, we find... Uh, also its name confirmed the covenant. Notice also the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. It says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. That's the covenant. And so here we have the covenant. There is a covenant that is confirmed. Now then as we go to the Next slide, notice we have one week. This is the uh, 70th week in continuation without any hesitation, without any split, without any pause, uh, the 70th week. I wish I had time to go more to go into uh, when this is and all, but we'll see some of the things that I think will show you. There are six events in verse 24 uh, that portray what the 70th week is about. First of all, to finish the transgression. To finish the transgression means to bring it to the fullness. Um, uh, so as Israel came into this period of time in the 70th week, uh, they came to the place where they met the Messiah. They knew him. They knew him to be the Messiah. 
but they rejected him as Messiah. They turned away from him as Messiah in the majority, and eventually they killed him. So that, uh, that finished the fullness of their transgression. So the, to finish the transgression means the transgression of, of rejecting the Messiah as a nation. Secondly, make an end of sins. So in the 70th week, uh, the, the Messiah, uh, through his death, Jesus Christ, um, ended sins. That is our charge, our guilt of sin when he died on the cross. Number three, to make reconciliation for iniquity. Of course, reconciliation was done on the cross of Calvary. That's our redemption. That's uh, Christ uh, bringing us unto God. Now, uh, go, as we go to the next slide, we find it's also called one week. And so we come up with the fourth reason, or the, rather the fourth event in that 70th week, and that is to bring in everlasting righteousness. The righteousness of the law is always being searched out because it can never be found. According to Romans 10, the righteousness which is of the law, Moses spoke about it, uh, that, you know, where is Christ? Where is the Messiah? Do we go to heaven and pull him down, or do we go down to hell and, or, or down into the deep and bring him up from the grave? Is that what we do? No, no. He said it's the righteousness of faith. Uh, but uh, the righteousness that is everlasting is that righteousness of Christ. And it's imputed uh, to the sinner through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The fifth thing is to seal up the vision and prophecy. To seal up means to make valid or to bring to fulfillment. Uh, in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, it talks about when the fullness of time is come. And so when the fullness of time had come, all these things were completed. And, and we we're going to seal up the vision. And so when that time came, uh, I, I believe this has to do with the finishing of the scriptures, which I don't have time to talk about right now. And then, number six, to anoint the most holy. I believe that Jesus Christ was anointed uh, as the most holy when he went into heaven to sit down at the right hand of his Father. Now as we go to the next slide, we also have it named One Week. And so there is an important element in this, a, per, a specific time period that's important in this week. It's one week because there are 70 weeks and that's the thinking of the Jews. So it has to be one week, whether we know what's first and last is unimportant. The most important thing is what happened in the midst of the week. Well, the one week begins when Jesus was baptized, when he went into his public ministry, and that's when he confirmed the covenant. That is, I'm confirming that I'm going to finish this covenant, accomplish this covenant, execute this covenant, I'm going to die for my people, that I'm going to save them from their sins, and so forth. Uh, so his baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. Uh, in other words, he was picturing what he was going to do. When he was baptized, he was picturing that he was going to be, uh, he was going to die, he was going to be buried, and he was going to be resurrected. That's the same reason we're baptized, except we're looking back when he's looking forward. Now notice in the midst of the week, Jesus died three and a half years after his baptism, and that's in the midst of the week, and that's very important. Now the next slide uh, talks about unto the consummation. <clears throat> all things are determined upon Israel uh, will be poured out upon them the desolate until Jesus comes. That's the consummation. And everything, and we don't know what that is. We don't know what all the things that God has for Israel to, uh, as a nation uh, to experience. But whatever it is, it will be poured out upon them until the consummation or when Jesus Christ comes again or at the end of the age. So we don't know much about that. Now that I've given you... <clears throat> In the next two slides, I'm just going to slightly uh, mention them because of time. We have a visual chart here that will give you a visual illustration of what I've been talking about. And I hope you'll get that in your mind. And then in the last slide, the greatest event of all time, of course, was the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs>